business since we're getting to it. Um, you guys noticed that in what I think 1970 ish. Yeah, that's when we that's when we started talking about that. It. There was nowhere to get a good cup of coffee, or uh, Gordon was traveling far to get that good coffee. Well, th that time you know, was it was you know the, the beginning of kids you know born during World War II, you know, um, you know almost boomers. And so, but they were coming of college age. It was, and going to Europe, traveling, uh, Icelandic air was one way to get there. Uh, you could get there very inexpensively, but you had to spend a night in Reykjavik. Um, in their case, uh, in the early 60s, they both took a boat, Queen Mary or something, uh, to Europe. Is that when they fell in love with the strong coffee that they? Uh, well, I think missed? Gordon would credit uh, that tri the Italian part of that trip uh, to uh, to developing a, a taste for European coffee. And then when when did that taste for European coffee morph into the discussion between you three, sometimes at loud volumes, uh, into starting a business around it? Well, we had uh, I had worked for IBM. I'd worked for Boeing. Uh, and I, the only thing I could say with any certainty was I didn't really want to work for a big company. Um, so I left. Uh, Zeb taught school. Uh, he was tired of that. He'd been a substitute for a while, and he was looking for things. Gordon was already doing a lot of different things. But we all tried to do other things. Gordon and I and a third guy tried to uh, produce eight films on... Uh, American music. So there's a lot of jazz, blues, other failures, so on. Type, not really failures, failures. but experiments no, please. Uh, before Starbucks uh, happened. Unfunded great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> We've um, very familiar with those. And Zev and, uh, and I started a, a business that had the briefest life uh, to do formatting uh, classical music radio formats. His father was the concert master of the Seattle Symphony. Hmm. Um, so we had classical music you know, so, connections. So there was some, a little bit of kind of churning there were a lot, business. Th there were lots of things. Some of them went a little ways. Uh, Gordon and Zev wrote sc screenplays for hmm. um, documentaries, King Screen production, and uh, lots, lots of screwing around. Uh, and then how, when did the Starbucks come into the picture? Or the coffee, I guess, as a business? Well, I, we were we're interested in doing you know other things obviously yeah. so uh gordon proposed the idea of coffee uh, the three of us were there we liked it uh it seemed like a good idea and our aspiration at that time really was to open one store and you know the idea of building a company was just i mean i don't think it occurred to very many people at that time anyway uh but this is tr really organic entrepreneurial mm. activity. and this is in, this in uh, seattle Sorry, it's in. This is in this Seattle. This is in Seattle, right? Um, and uh, was that over a cup of coffee, or once you have the idea there, uh, how does it become start to become a reality? Well, I don't. Rec I re Gordon and I recall it differently. I recall that it was uh, during the the summer, and we were outside. Uh, Zev lived on uh, on Puget Sound, and you know, with this not a very wonderful house but in a wonderful place and uh, that's where I recall the discussion but we would just started talking about it Zev was fabulous at research you know uh, a friend of mine who worked for Lockheed shipbuilding and management uh, was introduced to an idea that I've held on to is that they divided people into three categories starters carriers and finishers Zev was definitely a starter. I am definitely a carrier. If you get it going, I'll keep it going. Hmm. Um, so he started researching uh, uh, coffee. We sent him to the Bay Area. He went down here. He's the one who found Alfred Pete. How did he originally find Pete? Well, he is, uh, the last looked player. at all looked at the at all two of the <laughs> coffee bean roasting businesses at the time. Uh, one was uh, has become Capricorn Coffee, which I believe still exists, and, uh, and the other was Pete's. And it was clear to Zev, and he was right, that Alfred Pete knew a lot about coffee. He's the one with the 
credibility, authenticity, knowledge, and if he would agree to supply us. Yeah, so Zev went over to here to the Bay Area to meet him, to just Berkeley, on like a right. cold trip? Right. Uh, well, so he did this research, came back, reported. Uh, we you know, got back in touch with Alfred Pete, and uh, he agreed to supply us. And as part of that, we worked in his store, learned about coffee. Later on, he taught me to roast coffee. It definitely was, will come up. Was a, a generous mentor. But that, you know, in addition to having uh, complementary skills, hooking up with Alfred Pito actually knew what he was doing. You know, uh, mentorship, in a way. Right. The next valuable. And that just came from a cold. Um, Zev went to the library at that time and looked it up because we didn't have computers. Uh, well, at that time, I mean, there were you no. Know, <laughs> No, actually, librarians, you know, which has turned into inform information science, were really valuable people. But uh, you, you would go, I mean, whenever any of us went to another city, we'd go find a telephone book, if you were, any of you have seen any of mm. those. And we'd go to the coffee, the yellow pages and coffee and pull them out and then go visit all the coffee establishments. You know, and it's, it's, it's in true, uh, more true in Europe than the United States because there were very few here, New York, uh, San Francisco, not much else. And at the time, you guys were thinking that uh, Pete, it, it was between him and one other guy, and you're thinking that he was the best one? Well, he had one store, we were all, and he had another one happening here in Menlo Park uh, that opened in, like, as I recall, 1972. Yeah. So it was a pretty small business. I mean, it was really, let's say, an adjustment on, on existing uh, businesses, uh, but there were there was one place in Seattle that I can think of where you could buy coffee beans, and actually they were just reprocessed or repackaged uh, beans from mm. a, uh, a commercial roaster. There's Murchies in Vancouver, B.C. Uh, nothing in Portland, to my knowledge, and then San Francisco. So now in the in the timeline, you guys have come together as a group, discussed. Um, this coffee, and then Zev went out and found Pete, um, and now you're gonna open up a store. Um, and I'm assuming that needed some sort of capital to get going. Did you guys have yeah. have uh, something saved up? Or at the time, venture obviously wasn't a super big option. Uh, no, uh, Zev and I borrowed money from our sisters. <laughs> uh, Gordon had a job. Generous had sisters. A little money. Um, so we each put in $1,350. Sometimes that's described as 1,500 just for in round numbers. Uh, and then uh, unbelievable, well, and you know, this could never happen now, but uh, one of our other mentors was a, 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 an established lawyer in Seattle. And so we had talked to him about our plans and he called his friend the banker and said, you know, I'll lend these guys some money. Uh, <laughs> And so he lent us five thousand uh, dollars. So we were loaded. I mean, we had almost ten grand, and uh, that was enough to get going. I mean, what was interesting in that that banking thing is that, you know, it's so different now. But at a certain point, we kept borrowing and borrowing because we kept growing. And the banker said, "Well, you know, we don't want to lend you any more money because your demands are going to be insatiable." So well. You know, later on, I said, well, isn't, I thought banks made their money lending money, but, you know, what do I know? Uh, so, uh, you know, the lesson for me was always have the next banker, uh, the next banking relationship established. So, I, you know, I'd already gone to lunch with the banker at the other bank. So I yes. just called him and boom. Building those relationships relationship. early, so when you needed it. Yeah, yeah. it's a good lesson. <laughs> um, so actually, I did adjustment for inflation earlier, and that would, you would have, had to begin Starbucks, I believe, fifty-four thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, Which today it'd probably take a hundred in most yeah. places. But, yeah. Um, but the barrier to entry is low.